Amen. Aren't you thankful this morning that Jesus sure does save? Let's stay in this morning. Page 380. We're going to continue what the choir started for us. Page number 380. Jesus saves. On that first together, we have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward seems our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves. Far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing the islands of the sea, echo back the ocean caves. Earth shall be heard to believe, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing that last. Give the wind a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Good morning. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. We thank you for being with us. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us all safe so far today. And God, I pray, Lord, you be with us. God, you've given us so far this time. And God, I pray, Lord, you'd help us to use it wisely, Lord, that, God, we'd be about your business. God, help us not to be lazy. Help us not to just be apathetic. But, Lord, we would not have a heart for those around us. Lord, in this day and time, there's so many around us that need to see the light of Jesus. Help us to be the Bible that so many may need to see. Lord, help us live a life honoring to you. God, be with us and help us to get rid of all distractions from the past week. And Lord, we can just focus on your word and your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Baptist Church. We are thrilled to death that you are here on this, uh, I guess we would consider it holiday weekend. I'm not really sure. Do we get to consider this one and the next one holiday? But uh, we are thankful that you're here with us. If you are visiting with us for the first time or the first time in a long time, these fellas standing up front would love to give you a card and uh, some information about the church. If you would just slip your hand up if you're visiting with us for the first time or first time in a long time. But thank you so much for being here. Let me give you a couple of very quick announcements. Those of you that are going on the South Dakota mission trip, uh, Friday at 7 a.m., we need you to be here. It is uh, pretty early compared to when they're leaving, but the problem is, is that you've got 18 uh, that are going on that reservation. And with that being true, it takes a long time to get 18 checked in. It takes a long time to get 18 bags tagged. It takes a long time. And if one of them gets booted, if we're not there on time, they can technically boot the entire group of 18. And so you say, really? Yeah, they did it uh, the last time. Uh, that they uh, went to, uh, on a mission trip down to South America, not South America, Central America, a few years ago. They were uh, checked in and everything, but they said they were a half hour late because they had a group, and um, they kicked them all off, and that caused mass, caused mass hysteria. And so we don't want that to happen. So rather to be early and sitting in the uh, airport uh, for an hour or two than it is to be trying to scramble to get uh, 18 people to Minnesota. So um, we want to make sure that we do that. You say, Minnesota? I thought you said you was going to South Dakota. Watertown, South Dakota is probably like um, a Conover or a Newton. Very few people. And uh, so there's not a major airport 
that's actually the closest major airport uh, to us. So we're flying in there, and uh, both Tim and uh, 17 other people will be headed out. Looking forward to what the Lord will do. They'll be doing Bible school and all, finishing up some visitation, Bible school, and all there. And then on Thursday and Friday, uh, they'll do a little bit of sightseeing. They're going to go to uh, Mount Rushmore. Badlands, Crazy Horse, and uh, whatever. We, we can't remember. But they'll do a lot of sightseeing, cover a lot of miles and all that. So you'll be praying for them. They'll work hard for about five or six days, and then they will uh, uh, will travel for a couple couple of days. So looking forward to what the Lord will do. But uh, you'll be praying for them, but be here at 7 o'clock that morning, hopefully to pull out by 7.30. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., will be the uh, morning prayer time if you would like to come, 5 a.m. We'll have this side door open here, but lights uh, barely on. It'll be a great time to come and pray and quiet before you head off to work and all of that, especially since uh, there's no uh, school now. So uh, July and August will be great days if you can come and pray uh, with us, and I would love to do that. Of course, tonight, Sunday Night Fellowship, uh, tonight is pizza night, so We've got 60 pizzas that uh, we've ordered. They'll be delivered right at uh, 7 o'clock. Well, we'll go pick them up right at 7 o'clock. And uh, so looking forward to having a good time uh, and all of that. So they're there from anywhere from cheese, if that's what you like, all the way up to uh, everything, everything on it. And uh, God bless you if you like that. Uh, that's your cup of tea when you just have at it. But we've got... Uh, that that we'll be doing, and also mark your calendars before we do birthdays. This Tuesday we'll have our midweek service. We moved it uh, up a day just simply because it butted up against the Fourth of July. We wanted to have it give you an opportunity if you're going to be traveling or anything like that later in the week to give you that time. So we'll have our Wednesday night service on Tuesday night at six thirty, same time, and all of that. Of course, tonight starts summertime Bible time. As most of you know, during the summertime, we have a uh, glorified, uh, almost like a vacation Bible school type thing uh, at 6 o'clock every Sunday night called Summertime Bible Time, and uh, we'd love to come be a part of that since Iwanas has stopped for the summer, and that'll go every, every night that we have uh, Sunday night service, we'll have Summertime Bible Time, and I know Tim will be taking care of that his helpers, so uh, you come be a part of that. Now, we do encourage you to have uh, your young people in the service with us during the summertime. Matter of fact, we encourage it at any time, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to take advantage of summertime Bible time, and uh, we'd love for you to do that. All right. Have, oh, I did, I did that this morning. On Tuesday at 12 o'clock, we start the new outreach, the new ministry that we have. It's the uh, Widow's Luncheon, Widow Widower Luncheon. Uh, over the course of the last few years, we have noticed uh, a, a significant amount of out. We've lost some very good uh, fellas as well, as well as some ladies, and their spouses are left alone. So what we're doing is every quarter starting on Tuesday, we're doing a widow or widower's luncheon. Uh, absolutely no cost to you. We want you to come out to fellowship, have a good time, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, growing together. One thing I do want to encourage you to do is if you know someone in the community, maybe a friend of yours that uh, you know that their spouse has passed, uh, invite them. They'll be going through the same things that you are. They'll need some encouragement, some fellowship, and uh, a free meal, and we'd love for that to happen. So if you know somebody and you'd like to invite them, by all means, do that. Uh, we're going to encourage that. We're not trying to steal members or anything like that. Uh, I just believe the Bible talks about being an encouragement as well as reaching out to uh, and uh, helping the widow. We'll do that Tuesday at 12 o'clock. Be absolutely no cost to you. You just show up, and uh, we'll have a time of uh, food and fun and fellowship. And uh, so looking forward to that. So that'll be Tuesday at 12 o'clock. 
Alright, who had a birthday? Does anybody have a birthday? I was hoping you'd show up today. No, not you, Dylan, Miss Pat. <laughs> Miss Pat, what day was yours on? Yesterday. All right. Wonderful. And Miss Gilda, what day was yours on? 23rd. All right. Wonderful. Anybody else? Oh, Dylan. Wonderful. How old did you turn? 15. Have you got your permit yet? No. Oh, my goodness. I bet uh, I bet you come just so I could introduce you to a little girl, didn't you? You sure? You, you gonna have your uh, future brother-in-law help you find a, uh, a a little girl? Yeah. He might pick out somebody like your sister. <laughs> if y'all could see his eyes when I said that, <laughs> it might be a combination of both your sisters. <laughs> Anybody else's birthday? All right. How about anniversary this week? All right. Good night. What happened? <laughs> All right. Miss Diane, how many years? 30. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Brother Mark, how many years? 31. All right. 31, 33. Is it 20? 19. Oh, okay, 19. 20. 19. Oh, the same day? Hey, an hour earlier. <laughs> oh, that's neat. Me and one of our missionaries, Robin and Isaac, same day also. So, Yes, ma'am. How many years? Not. Now, wait a minute. What day is yours on? Today. Okay, okay. All right. Hey, Amen. My goodness. Anybody else? 19, 19, 31, 33. Do what? And three 19s. Three 19. All right. Anybody else? Birthday anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And happy anniversary.
and Jennifer Tomko too. Let's grab a handbook one more time this morning, if you will. Page 534, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. We're going to sing three verses and have our offering this morning. Page number 534, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. On that first together. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I Him. Sing it out on that last. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that He is with me. Will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. How I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. The great sing this morning. Brother Ben Deeks, will you pray for us?
before we um, start singing this morning, I'd just like to thank the Lord for saving my soul and for giving me another opportunity to be up here and sing and praise in his name. Also, just please pray for Cook family as I leave next weekend to go up north for about two and a half months. So at least you have a little bit of Stephanie and kids behind. So just pray that the Lord will watch over them and also watch over me and my help as well. Give the Lord the glory. Amen. Thank you for your prayer. Exchange the sinner for the sinless one. Jesus left his throne on high, came to earth to bleed and die. He said, Father, not my will, but thy be done. He is mine. Describe the matchless beauty there. We will praise the perfect Lamb, King of Kings, the Great I Am. He has made the joys of heaven ours to share. He is mine. He is mine. He is mine. I am pardoned, full, and free. Through the blood he shed for me, stay forever. I shall be. He is mine. He is mine. He is mine. I am blessed beyond all. He is mine. I am pardoned, full, and free. Through the blood he shed for me, stay forever. I shall be. He is mine. I am pardoned, full, and free. Through the blood he shed for me, stay forever. I shall be. He is mine. Number three. Exodus chapter number three, when you find your place, would you stand for the reading of God's word? (coughs) Exodus chapter number three, verse number one. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Oreb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. 
Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. He said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. If you will, look at verse number 3. It will be our text verse. It says, As Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. I want to preach to you this morning, Can I spark your curiosity? Can I spark your curiosity based out of verse number 3, where it says, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And may we pray. Father, we do love you. Thank you for the many blessings of life. Thank you, Lord that we truly are blessed beyond all measure. Father, to just know that you give us the opportunity to be saved, to know that you give us the opportunity, Lord, to not only to be saved, but to have a home in heaven someday. And Father, as we await that day, may we be found faithful. And Father, I pray that you would help us. I pray... Lord, that today that you would show us that that we need to be shown. I pray, Father, that you'd spark our curiosity, and that, Lord, we would desire to learn more, to know more about you. I pray, Father, that you'd help me to say that that needs to be said. Nothing more, and surely nothing less. Father, there may be one or many in this building that don't know you and the free pardon of sin never been saved, have never been born again. And Father, my heart hurts as well as I know you do. Yours does because you gave your precious son for them. And I pray, Father, that something would be said or done that would spark their curiosity this morning. That, Lord, they would want to know more. They would want to learn, Lord, about your precious son, my Savior. Father, for every Christian, I pray you'd help them to see that a greater, deeper, bigger knowledge of you, Lord, just leads to a more fulfilling and greater life. I pray, Father, that you're blessed. We'll thank you. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Curiosity is something that, when you look it up, is defined as eager to know or to learn something. In other words, if you remember back uh, years ago, I think it actually still comes on. How many of you remember the little monkey, Curious George? How many of you have never seen Curious George? Gilda, you have never seen Curious George. You have a homework assignment. You need to go home, and I know you have a computer. You Google on YouTube Curious George and watch Curious George. I'm telling you, out of most services, you're missing a blessing. <laughs> so, no, most of us know uh, at, uh, we'll get, I tell you what, we'll pause for five minutes and let you look. No, I'm kidding with you. But, uh, most of us remember Curious George and all of that. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, there were times when uh, uh, George uh, had good curiosity and there were times when he had bad curiosity. The reality is in the Scripture that we read, if you look at it and you kind of think about it for a minute, it says that, verse number 2, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. In other words, he kind of looked and he was like, well, that bush ain't burned. What's going on here? In other words, he was curious. And so he wanted to examine, he wanted to know 
why something was. He was eager to learn. I mean, I'll be honest with you. If I'm walking along on the back side of the desert tending my animals and my sheep and all of that, and I look off into the distance on the side of the mountain and I see a, bur- uh, a burning bush, uh, I think I'm going to be a little bit curious too. Because if you've ever played with fire, I'm not advocating that, by the way, parents. But if you've ever played with fire, you know that if you light a bush, uh, it's going to do one thing, burn up. So he was curious, but there's not only good curiosity in the Bible, there's bad. If I could redirect you to Judges chapter 14, verses 8 and 9, if you'll remember, Samson was one of, that was uh, bad, that uh, ended up with the curiosity uh, you remember the carcass of the lion and the honeycomb and all of that, and you remember he had taken the Nazarite vow, and his curiosity got him into big trouble and all of those things. But that's not what we're talking about this morning. We are talking about the good kind. We are talking about the good kind of curiosity where you are eager to learn or to know something. And by the way, if we do seek the Lord and, and we are curious, and we are eager to learn, and we are, if I, if I remind you of Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6, he said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In other words, if you and I want to be blessed, then we ought to have a curiosity about uh, God. We ought, there ought to be something that drives us or or, or gets us there to be eager to learn or to know something this morning. Just as Moses' relationship with God was deeper and better and uh, uh, more fulfilling than it ever had been as he was there on the back side of the desert. Remember, he goes on to lead the nation of Israel out of captivity. He goes on. Now, by the way, may I say all of this, when you are curious and eager to learn or to know something, may I remind you that even Moses was not a perfect individual the whole time. Remember when he spoke uh, uh, to God out of the burning bush, and uh, oh, what did he say? Uh, I, I got a stutter, st- stuttering problem. I mean, there were times when he was not what he should be. So when we talk about being eager to learn or curious or may I spark your curiosity, let me remind you that is not saying that you're going to be perfect. That's not saying that you're always going to do everything exactly right. We strive for the mastery, but that doesn't mean that we're always going to be master at it. So I want to, some people a lot of times say, well, I'd, I'd like to know something. I'd like to learn something, but I'm afraid I might mess up. Well, welcome to the club. I remember back, I was uh, curious about one time about, okay, man, we're, we're, this was years ago. Some of you may remember this. It never come about, and I'm so glad it didn't. It was a uh, it, it was really weird. It was one of those moments where I said something and I was like, well, I wish I'd have never have said that or developed that. But I remember uh, years ago I, uh, here at this church, I was uh, thinking, okay, how can I spark Sunday school attendance? How can I get Sunday school attendance? And, and, I, and I, I announced we were going to have Sumo Sunday. Now, does anybody remember that? Thank God. I'm glad none of you remember it because it was what it was was we were going to try to y'all don't even remember it praise God my own family don't even remember it but I remember I I was curious I I wanted to learn more about how to and it and I was reading some stuff and it said man have some kind of thing that culminates in this big day and I thought sumo Sunday so me and the youth director at that time were uh, 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 and uh, so we're going to have a uh, 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 order them uh, sumo suits. You ever seen them? You blow them up with hair and you and you wrestle or you fight or whatever. And I'll never forget it. Everybody kind of looked at me like, "What?" Needless to say, it only lasted one Sunday and it was gone. And 
nobody. Obviously, it didn't make much of a, uh, anything on some of you because some of you have been here and you don't remember it. Thank God. <laughs> but I'll remember that. So we fail sometimes. But you know what? You get up, dust yourself off, and you continue to stoke the curiosity. Well, what is it then that you and I should be curious about? First of all, I want you to be curious. Can I spark your curiosity about the wonders of God? The wonders of God. In other words, you look around and you see people that are blessed. You see people that God has His hand upon them. And, 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 and you see people talking about the things of God and, and the ways of God and, and all of these things in your life. What, what are they doing? Well, I want to spark your curiosity about the wonders of God. Why? Because sometimes, as Psalm 46.10 says, we just need to be still and know that He's God. Sometimes we're so busy doing everything else, but I want you to stop for a second and just look around and say, man, those people over there, how is it that they're blessed? How is it that... And spark your curiosity about the wonders of God. Why? Because if you'll stop and look around, look at what you can see that God is doing. Too many times we're just, uh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I gotta... How many of us are busy people? How many of us are, are, are not busy? I mean, maybe you are here and you're not busy. But most of us, my mother retired a few years ago. And, and boy, I made a mistake this past week. I called her up and I was talking to her. And uh, I uh, made a big mistake. I said, Mom, I said, uh, uh, what are you doing now? There's some things that have changed in their life and all of that. And I said, now that you've got all this time, what are you doing? Let me just tell you this. It didn't go very good after that. All this time, it seems like I'm busier now than I've ever been. I said, I'll never ask that again. But curiosity, or curious about the wonders of God. I mean, he goes on, Psalm 46, 10, Colossians 1, 10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. In other words, curious about the wonders of God. Let me give you a Bible character that illustrates this. How many of you remember Zacchaeus? Do you remember what Zacchaeus did? He got mad and went home and sat on his front porch and said, Listen, I'm not going to see the Lord today. That's not what the song says, is it? Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in an old oak tree. What an oak tree was it? Sycamore tree. We all remember the song, don't we? Why did he do that? Because he was curious. Because he was wondering about the Lord and the wonders that he had done. Obviously, somebody had said, hey, you know what, Zach? There, this is this guy coming to town. And he has healed the lame. He's helped the blind. He's had the blind to see. Those that uh, have trouble ta uh, uh, that uh, uh, are dead, he's, he's uh, brought them back to life. All of these things, Zach, Zach he, excuse me, Zacchaeus, look at what he's done. He's done what? Oh, yeah. He's, he's healed the lame, caused the blind to see, the dumb to speak. He's uh, brought the dead back to life. I want to know about this guy. So what does he do? He was curious. So he climbs up in the sycamore tree. He does everything he can. He was eager to learn and to know something about the Lord. And that's the way you and I ought to be. Can I spark your curiosity to say, you know what? I want to know about this God. I want to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, may I say to you today, listen, He is the best thing that will happen to you. He is the greatest thing that will happen to you. 
He is one that will love you and care for you and reach down to you. And I'm getting ahead of point number four, but the reality is, is that the wonders of the Lord, He wants to bless you. He wants to do all of these things. Philippians 3.10, Paul, writing to the church at Philippi, uses this phrase, that I may know Him. And that's the way you and I are. I want to spark your curiosity that you can say, listen, I want to know Him more. Now listen, if I said, okay, everybody, and I'm not, because I know what will happen. If I said, you know what, if you want to know the Lord more, would you just raise your hand? Everybody's hand would go up. Why? In a crowd this size, we're going to act like a crowd. But do you really want to do what it takes to learn more? Number one, can I spark your curiosity about the wonders of God? But number two, the Word of God. The Word of God. Curious about knowing the Word of God. In other words, there's so much, so much in this Bible. So much, church. So much, Christian. So much, friend. But how often do we actually say and know, we say it a lot, but how many times are we actually eager to learn something from the Word of God? How eager are we to sit down for preaching? How eager are we? Or is this what usually happens? All right, it's 1145. You're only on point number two. It looks like it's going to be a 12, 15, 12, 30 kind of guy. That's what happens. Listen, I, I know the 12 o'clock shuffle. What's the 12 o'clock shuffle, preacher? You're not fooling anybody. You see how I checked out my time? I'll do it again. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> I'm just picking in the call. The reality is, is that how many of us want to learn something? How many of us are curious? How many of us were excited to be able to come to church today? How many of you were excited to be able to, Hey, praise the Lord, I get to go to church today. Hey, praise the Lord, I get to open my Bible today. Hey, praise the Lord, I get to spend time with God's people today. Hey, praise the Lord, I, I get to do that and I'm eager about it. But listen, if you're here today and you're not, I want to spark your curiosity to show you that, listen, it says in Acts 17, 11, these Christians here, says they were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the Word with all readiness of mind. Man, they were excited. They were ready to get the Word of God. They were ready to get into the Word of God. They were ready to crack open. Now, they didn't have a Bible, the canon of Scriptures like we did. But man, they were ready to get into the parchments and get into the Bible and say, man, look at her. I never saw that before. Hey, look at her. I never read that before. Hey, look at her. God promises that. Hey, look at her. It is true what that preacher said. Hey, look right there. It is true. How many times have you been showed up at church not ready? It says readiness. The word that they use there with all readiness of mind, and search the Scriptures daily whether those things were so. In other words, they were checking it out. They were getting into the Word of God. In other words, they were curious about some things, and they were eager to learn. Or is this what's going to happen when we get home? We're going to take the Bible, and we're just going to chunk it off to the side and say, well, we'll pick it back up next week. Well, maybe if, if time permits, I'll, I'll catch it. You know, it is rerun season on television, and I can't stand reruns. So rather than DVR or anything like that, I might just catch a verse or two. May I spark your curiosity into the wonder of God and the Word of God. 
But number three, can I spark your curiosity into the will of God? The will of God. What are you getting at? There's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than not following the will of God for your life. By the way, let me submit this right here. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Every single person in this building, God desires for you to be saved. We are not, we are not Calvinists in this room or in this church. You say, what in the world's that? That's where God saves some and God doesn't save some. We don't believe that way. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish. Whosoever, anybody can be saved. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, may I say to you this morning, God loves you and sent His Son to die for you. And all you have to do is simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Don't say He can't save you. Yes, He can save you. Yes, He will save you. And if you are not saved, you can be saved. So number one, He's not willing that any should perish. So we we know the will of God is for you to be saved. And then the second thing is, is the will of God is that you and I eat up the Word of God. What are you talking about? First Peter 2, 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that ye may grow thereby. You know that word desire in that verse carries the idea of being curious or eager to learn about the Word of God? He puts it inside of you that, one, He wants you to be saved. That's the will of God. Number two, that the will of God is that you desire the sincere milk of the Word. That you have this curiosity. Oh, I want to learn more. Hey, you know what? Many, 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 many moons ago, I fell in love with this lady right here. And you know what happened? When I, when I, when I met her and I started falling in love with her, man, I want to know more about her, brother. I want to know more about her. I mean, she wanted to know more about me, too. I mean, it was like she was calling me about every ten minutes. Hey, tell me this. Hey, tell me that. That's my recollection, honey. That's how I remember it. (laughs) She says, lying and still as hen. But the honest truth is, is that we wanted to know more about each other. I mean, that's how you grow. That's how you know. So the will of God is that you be saved. The will of God is that you have a sincere desire for the Word of God. And so you and I ought to desire that. The will of God for our life is to be saved. The will of God is to sincerely desire the milk of the Word. Thirdly, our sincere will is that we walk in the way that He wants us to. What do you mean by that? Aren't you glad God didn't make us all the same? I'm glad that I'm not like you. But guess what? I bet you're glad you're not like me either. Some of you were blessed with red hair. But you don't have red hair. It's more gray or white. Thank you all for that. Appreciate all of that. But you know what? God has different plans and purposes for each one of us. God had a plan for me to do what I did, to be down at UNC Charlotte, to meet this young lady, to fall in love, to be married and have three wonderful, beautiful children. In the middle and in the monks of all that, he had a sense of humor. 
she looked at me because she was a PK, a preacher's kid, and said, you're not going to be a preacher someday. And I answered in the uh, uh, negative there, no, I'm not going to be a preacher someday. <laughs> I didn't know. I was just doing what God wanted me to do at that time. But some 20-some years later, look where we're at. What have we done? Followed the will of God. You'll never go wrong following the will of God for your life. But you need to have a curiosity about that, eager to learn that. Because how bad is it when you get into the latter stages of your life and you know you didn't do what God wanted you to do? I've had people sit in my office before weeping, Sad. I mean, just broken. And they look across the desk at me and they say, Preacher, I know God wanted me to do this years ago, and I didn't do it. And I've lived with that regret. I've lived with that remorse. And I've lived with that for all of these years, and now... I never can do what He asked me to do. You say, preacher, everybody can't be a preacher or pastor. I'm not talking necessarily about that because not everybody's going to be a preacher. Not everybody's going to be a pastor. Not everybody's going to be a missionary. Hey, listen, I believe that God uh, puts people in places. Hey, you know what? I believe God can use and puts people to be a nurse or to be... Uh, an engineer, or to be a doctor, or to be a lawyer, or to be a policeman, or that. Hey, we need Christians in every aspect of this world. You say you believe that God can have somebody to be a, uh, call them to be a Christian ditch digger? Yes, I do. I believe when they're out there digging a ditch, uh, that there needs to be somebody out there to show them Jesus. And how sad it is that many times. We miss the will of God. And then we live our lives. And we look back and we're like, why did I not just have the curiosity? Why did I not answer God when He said, you know, I want you to be a school teacher. I want you to be an elementary school teacher so that you can show little boys and girls that uh, there really is love, that somebody really does love them, and Jesus loves them. And years later, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to make money. This life is not about money, is it, church? It's not all about money. You'll follow the will of God. So, preacher, I don't know the will of God for my life. Have you ever just knelt down at an old fashioned altar and asked God? Be ready. Be ready. Because He's going to tell you. You ask Him, He'll tell you. That's why a lot of us don't ask. That's why a lot of us don't. Uh, come down to an old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, I'm ready to do whatever you want me to do. I'm ready to answer the call for whatever you want me to do. We think that if we ignore the will of God, that we're not uh, accountable to the will of God. But may I submit to you, just because you ignore the will of God does not mean you're not accountable to the will of God. In other words, when God tells you to do something, you can put your fingers in your ears and say, ah, all you want to. But you're still responsible for it. Can I spark your curiosity about the will of God? Psalm 143, verse 8, the psalmist sums it up this way, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me now to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Colossians 1 9, 
Paul writes, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and, understand, and spiritual understanding. Ephesians 5.17, Paul writing again, says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. That's just three of many that say, Lord, show me your will. Can I spark your understanding or your curiosity to the wonders of God, to the Word of God, to the will of God? And then lastly, to the warmth or the love of God. There is nothing like knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The only way I can tell you that is spark your curiosity and let you experience it. When I was growing up, my daddy was always the gruff and tough one of the family. But my, my, my wife, my mother always had a soft, tender life. If I got hurt, if I stubbed my toe, if I fell, I'd run past my, my, my daddy. And Mama would pull me in close. And it was like it made him I tell you this, that's the way it is with the warmth and the love of God. There's just something about the very creator and sustainer of this world allowing us to speak to Him, allowing us to crawl up close to Him, to gather underneath the shadow of the Almighty and to talk with Him and to speak with Him. When we're going through the, the, the dirt of this life, with the trouble of this life, when we're going through all kinds of troubles and trials and tribulations and discouragements and depressions and dismay and all of these things and death as we talked about last week, all of these things, I tell you this, there's no better place Something about the warmth. Ephesians chapter three and verse number nineteen tells us, and to know the love of Christ, the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Notice the first part of that verse, Ephesians three nineteen, and to know the love of Christ. My hope for you today is to spark your curiosity to know the love of Christ. But notice that next, after the comma in verse 19, what does it say? Which passeth knowledge. It's hard to describe, church. It's hard to even tell you because unless you've experienced it, that's why we want to spark you to, to curiosity, to, to eagerness to learn that, to experience that, to know that. Why? Because it's something that passes knowledge. It's hard to even explain. It's hard to even try to put into words. Why? Because there's just something about it that when you've experienced it, just it just blows your mind. You can't even explain how in the midst of, of troubles and trials, and it's just like there's a to the warmth and the love of God. When you're going through distress and disease and the doctor looks at you and says, hey, you don't have but X number of weeks or months or years to live and, and this peace comes over you because you know that everything's all right. How do you put that into words? How do you explain that? I want to know that, preacher. Then get into, spark the curiosity into the wonders and the Word and the will because knowing that warmth only comes by knowing His Word and the will and the wonders of Him. 
And so this morning, what kind of relationship do you want to have with Him? If we can spark your curiosity, you can have a fuller, greater, deeper love of God and His precious Son, Jesus Christ. The problem is not with Him. The problem is with us. He already loved you and gave His dear Son for you. to know more about the wonders of God, then find a place to get out. Do you want to know more of the Word of God? Then get in the book, get in the altar and say, God, show me, motivate me, move me. Do you want to know the will of God for your life? Learn more and know more. And then lastly, preacher, I want to know the one. I want to know the love of God that you're talking about. Then get in the book. Get closer to Him. Learn more of His wonders. Learn more of His Word. Thank you for your love and your mercy.